Welcome to Amplifier's interview series. My name is Christian and joining me today is the CEO at Robonize and the growth manager at Zendev, Harris. Harris, welcome to the series. How are you today? Hey, Christian. My pleasure to be here. Um, we at Zendev really love Amplify since we got so many good opportunities there. If it continues to deliver new leads like it did in the last couple of months, we might be your best case study, actually. So feeling great today and thanks for having me here. No, that, that, that's good to hear, and, and that's the goal, and this is why we are meeting today is because, you know, we want to share with the community information through these interviews and kind of educate them on certain levels in the, in, in the terms of software development, uh, and, and today we're talking about another side of product development, the marketing. You know, it's not enough to build a product and build it right. The product needs to reach potential customers. So maybe to start us off, Harris, uh, how do you typically conduct market research before beginning a digital marketing campaign? And what factors do you consider when analyzing your target audience and competition? Really good question and surely a, a wide one, but I will try to, to answer as short as possible to, to keep it keep it focused, actually. So before beginning a digital marketing campaign, uh, conduct, conducting market, market research is critical to understanding your target audience and competition. So uh, define your target audience. Uh, that is the first step. Usually identify who they are by, by considering demographics, uh, interests, behaviors, um, or any other relevant factors. Then uh, switch to competitors, and you have to know who you are competing against. So research companies that offer similar products or services to yours and find your competitive edge somewhere there. Yeah. So uh, the next step would be actually to to focus on data. So data is your friend. So collect it on your target audience and compet competition as well. Uh, use surveys, use interviews, use um, focus groups or any other like online online research tools. Um, what I would add uh, as next would be like to understand your target audience's needs, preferences, behaviors, as well as your um, competitors' strengths and weaknesses. Um, what to focus on next would be actually to use all of those insights you gained from your market research to develop a digital uh, marketing campaign that addresses your target audience's needs and differentiates your product from uh, the services or products of your competitors. So this process should be actually the recurring process and done as many times as possible to, to, to get the maximum results. So sometimes like those small changes in approach can make a huge difference and help you stand out um, from others. So. Uh, which small things am I actually talking about here? For example, um, when considering demographics, don't stop on age and gender, but go a bit deeper, like analyze income, analyze education, or any other demographic factors you might find inter interesting to actually make that specific custom audience. So collect their personality, their values, their interests, and, uh, and or lifestyle. Um, Maybe I would add also there to actually analyze your target audience's buying behaviors, which is quite important in the in the in the in the in the year that we live in. So, uh, be uh, like be understand the online behaviors in general as well as any other relevant behaviors you might find useful to make a custom audience profile for your product or service. Um, consider their needs, their desires, and their pain points. This might like sound a bit like complicated, but to actually make a difference out there, you have to like go a bit deeper than just like using the tools and and using like the everything that AI gives us. Like you have to go deeper to understand better and to make make the best for you and your company. Um, when it's about competitors, analyze their strengths and weaknesses, pricing strategies, and marketing messages. Do not copy them, but do that additional step and give something more to the user or, or, or of your service or, or your product. Um, I would maybe add also to determine how your product or service is different from your competitive competition and how you can communicate that differentiation to your target audience. Like, is it disruptive or is it not? Like. So I would say like tailoring your audience's needs and differentiating your product or service from a competition is the way to go here. No, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, as you mentioned in today's uh, day, 
uh, of, of this year. I mean, everybody expects something a little bit more hyper personalized. So, you know, as you mentioned, looking at all those different data points, not just, you know, gender and age, but there's so much more that goes into, you know, uh, attracting the right audience and the audience that you're looking for. Let's, let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about, you know, how do you approach the collaboration with your development team when designing and implementing uh, a digital marketing strategy? And what strategies have you found to be the most effective in ensuring seamless integration between marketing and the development efforts? Um, yeah, well, let's let's try to explain this way. Like when approaching collaboration with the development team, I believe that it is important to involve them from the very beginning of the process. That um, this is not like on, this is this um, this not only helps ensure that the marketing strategy is fully integrated with the company's technology infrastructure but it also allows the development team to provide input on potential technical limitations or blockers or roadblocks that may need to be addressed like you might ask but how do you motivate them to that <laughs> to be that much involved like well here in zenda we prefer missionary approach instead of having only mercenaries you know like what is the difference between two of those uh, missionaries are much more um, engaged are much more motivated with deeper understanding of the business context even though you have to have mercenaries and you will have projects where you need them they usually have no passion for the problem to be solved or any connection to understanding of the actual user so um, I would say like clear lines of communication and regularly scheduled meetings between the marketing and development teams will help ensure that everyone is on the same page and that any issues or challenges can be addressed in a timely manner. So, like in the end, I would say that I believe that ongoing evaluation and refinement of the marketing strategy is uh, essential for success. So, by working together and continually refining the strategy based on feedback from both teams, it is possible to create a seamless integration between marketing and development team. Uh, and that will benefit the entire company in the end. Like, in my own experience, the most effective digital marketing strategies are those that are built on a foundation of collaboration, communication, and continuous improvement. So, by working together, uh, marketing and development teams can create campaigns that not only drive business results, but also provide a positive experience for customers and stakeholders alike. So from the point of view of, of, of a growth manager, like you should do a bit more and go beyond in, in, in your own approach to the people in the company as well to the clients, since you and that position can really make a huge difference with a little bit more of effort. No, there's there's a old term uh, back when I was in the Navy. They said one team, one fight, and it didn't matter what your job was. You know, you had one goal, and, and this is what it sounds like uh, that you're describing is that you know you have one goal, uh, and all the teams need to work together to make that happen. So let's um, let, let's talk about uh, a bit about how you measure you know, the success of your digital marketing campaigns and, you know, what specific metrics do you focus on to track the progress and, and make data driven decisions using, you know, the build, measure, learn methodology? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you, you use data driven as, as an example, because really here at Zendev, we are data driven in our decisions and optimization of our digital marketing campaigns. The measure of, um, the, of the success of um, our campaigns uh, we focus on a few key metrics that align with our self, um, overall business goals. I mean, these are like quite basic, but people usually forget to actually focus on them in this quite dynamic um, market or industry, whatever. So first one would be like conversion rate. This metric measures the percentage of users who complete a desired action, such as filling out a lead form or making a purchase, making a booking, whatever your like goal of the campaign is. So by tracking conversion rate, you can identify areas for improvement in your landing page or your call to actions. Like that would be maybe maybe most important thing. So second one would be actually like CPA or cost per acquisition. This metric actually measures the cost of acquiring a new customer. Uh, you can evaluate the effectiveness of your ad targeting. You can then adjust your budget accordingly to that, of course. And the third one mostly spoke about is the return on investment. People love to, to talk about it. So it actually measures the revenue generated by 
uh, our campaigns relative to the cost of the ad. So uh, by tracking ROI, you can determine which campaigns are most profitable and allocate resources accordingly. So how does build measure learn methodology help there? Like this involves uh, building a hypothesis about how a particular marketing campaign will perform, measuring its uh, performance against the chosen chosen metrics and learning from the results to optimize for future, for future campaigns. So by continuously iterating on our campaigns using data-driven insights, we can actually maximize our marketing ROI and drive business growth. No, it's super interesting. And I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into uh, what you guys do. And, and, you know, like I said, at the beginning, you can build a great product, but if you don't get the eyeballs on it, you know, what, what's the point? So those two things have to really coexist with each other. So yeah. um, I think one of the most important questions uh, of today, and it's my final question for you, is if people are interested in finding more about Zendev, where can they go? Yeah, our website is the place to be. So our website is zendev.se. Of course, we have profiles in every bigger social network as well. I would say uh, the easiest way would be to reach out on LinkedIn and let's have an e-coffee. Um, first one is on me. <laughs> Brilliant. So go check them out. The uh, links are in the description. Harris, I just want to say thanks so much for joining. It's been an enlightening conversation. Thank you very much, Christian, for having me and hopefully not the last one. <laughs>